Streetwear. You've heard about it, and you probably have some form of it in your closet. But do you really know how the entire subculture has evolved? This is streetwear. Before all the current heads of streetwear, such as Supreme, Bape, and Off-White were created, the subculture of fashion started in the 1970s with a brand named Stussy. Sean Stussy, the creator of his self-titled streetwear brand, began his unexpected career through selling printed t-shirts featuring the same trademark signature he plays on his custom surfboards. Initially, Stussy sold the items from his own car, but as the brand grew, Stussy expanded sales to boutiques. Stussy's move into exclusive sales formed the baseline definition of streetwear, which is taking a multifaceted, subculturally diverse Southern Californian lifestyle based t-shirt brand and mimicking the limited feel of high-end luxury brands. Those are the two most integral components of what makes a brand streetwear, t-shirts and exclusivity. This marked the start of what was to become one of the most popular subcultures in modern times. In the 80s and 90s, Adidas and particularly Nike dominated the urban streetwear market. Other brands such as Champion, Carhartt and Timberland were very closely associated with the streetwear scene particularly on the East Coast of America and regularly associated with hip-hop acts such as Wu-Tang and Gangstar. The late 90s brought with it the trend of oversized sport team jerseys, caps, and jackets. The scene saw professional American sports franchises such as the Los Angeles Raiders and Chicago Bulls making a huge impact. As the internet got more advanced, so did streetwear. We are beginning to see the rise of what people call the resale market. The exclusivity in brand names allowed people to take advantage of the situation and make money. People would buy limited products from companies at a retail price and sell to higher customers for a higher price. Let's take this shoe for example. Nike's Air Jordan 1 collaboration with high fashion streetwear brand Off-White. The retail price for these shoes was $190. US People knew the hype created around Off-White and once the shoe sold out, it was already on the market for $2,400 US and above. This is a 1,163.2% price increase. Now let's talk about the final rise of streetwear, high-end fashion houses. You may have heard of Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Balenciaga, and Givenchy, but did you know that they are all contributing to the streetwear scene tremendously? In fact, Louis Vuitton has appointed the founder of streetwear brand Off-White, Virgil Abloh, as the head of male design at the company, cementing the idea that streetwear is the future. Balenciaga has also created a wave of new styles of shoes, such as their speed trainers, which look like socks with soles, or their clunky dad shoes, the Triple S. Now to turn to Australia and streetwear. In Melbourne, streetwear has become a huge phenomenon. Retail stores such as Sneaker Boy and Culture Kings have paved the way for the streetwear scene to enter the country. A store by the name of Secret Sneaker Store encompasses the culture of reselling and gives it a retail space. Shoes are sold in this store through consignment which means people give the store their items. The store sells the items for the seller and takes a percentage of the profit, usually 20%. Undeniably, streetwear is one of the fastest growing markets in fashion and shows no signs of slowing down. As higher end fashion houses keep investing into the subculture, the more other companies will too. And only the future holds what is next for streetwear. Thanks for watching.